Well, this has been a, uh, a remarkable time. It's uh, this is where Carla and I were talking last night. This is our t- our twelfth uh, retreat here, and it's the first one that is all looking, no nothing else, and it has been magnificent from my point of view. I'd like to what I'd like to do this morning is uh, I have a couple things I want to say to try to kind of sum up what it is that um, you know, what it is that I'm trying to to present to people and suggest to people and what we've been talking about this for this time um, and then, Well, I'm undecided. We'll see how it goes. There's three things I want to do, and I'm not certain about the order of the last two. We'll just see how it goes. One of them involves uh, spending time where I hope you exhaust all the questions or comments or uh, concerns that you have, and uh, we'll see. The summing up of what it is that I've try, been trying to say is actually pretty simple because as I continuously say to great length, I have almost nothing to say. <laughs> I believe that there is a single cause for all human psychological misery, discontent, and distress. A single cause for all psychological human misery. By psychological misery, I mean misery and pain and torment and so forth that is not physically based in the material world, like hunger, uh, you know, uh, injuries, uh, brain chemistry, you know, things of that nature. Anything that's not physically based in the material world, I see to be psychological misery that has to do with our relationship with our own lives. And I think that all psychological misery has a single cause. That's really quite a uh, radical thing to suggest. And I think that all, that that single cause has a single cure. I think the cause of all psychological misery is the presence in the background of human life of a, of a constant kind of murmuring anxiety that is the experience of the fear of life itself. The sense that life is, is uh, flawed, that being human is a flawed experience, and, and that uh, human life is treacherous, not to be trusted, uh, it probably is going to kill us all, <laughs> but in a bad way. And uh, and if it doesn't, you know, drive us crazy first. Human life is the enemy. Human life is the problem. The content of my life is the problem. That's the psychological misery that I'm talking about. There's something in my life that needs to go, or there's something in there in my life that I don't have, that I have to get in order to finally be satisfied with being alive. Those are, that, that, that whole symptom picture are the symptoms of the fear of life. They are, they are grounded in the fact that we have a antagonistic relationship with the content of our lives, which I, also used synonymously with our minds. I think our lives and our minds are pretty much the same thing. <clears throat> I believe that, the, that, the, that there is a single act that can bring an end to the cause of all of that misery. And that single act is to find a way 
to get the direct experience of the actual feeling of you, of what it actually feels like to be you, who are in the background of all experience whatsoever, ever present, ever, never moving, never changing, and so forth, and so on. But all of those things are beside the point. The critical element to see is that what I'm talking about is what it feels like to be you, the experience of being you, just you. I believe that that uh, that by 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 attempting a, a, a mental act of trying to bring attention to that feeling and get the direct experience of it, the fear of life is snuffed out. Which leaves which leaves the whole structure of symptoms kind of. Uh, without a foundation. And that whole structure of symptoms will begin to disintegrate. And in the end, what will be left is the natural state of being human, in which life is as it is, and we are sane and skillful and intelligent enough to do the best we can to make of life uh, the best it can be. That human life is, is complicated, deeply interesting, uh, unpredictable, but profoundly satisfying and fulfilling when we are not uh, at war with it, at, based on our sense that, that that life itself is the enemy and the problem. <clears throat> I believe that this that this act, this movement of attention, will have this effect on any human being who tries it. And I believe that it actually takes just one time. Now that doesn't mean that there will be only one moment of looking, but the one look, one um, intentional attempt to get the direct experience of the feeling of you will will cause a kind of chain of events of looking at you, looking at you, which may be explained by any kind of rationalization that may come to mind, but that it is actually just uh, the... Uh, it's caused by the first single looking, that return, that repetition of turning attention inward. So that if you and you probably here all have, I hope, if you look once, you will continue to do so. You may find all kinds of uh, opinions and thoughts about the fact that you are looking, or you are, you know, without regard to whether you want to or not. You may want to and try to, or you may just wish it would go away. But the looking will continue until it doesn't, until it's over, until the sickness is over. I believe that, that no matter the state of the human mind that we are, spe the individual human mind that we're speaking of, that there is a vast array of basically psychotherapeutic uh, means and methods that can bring some relief and amelioration of the particular misery of particular neurotic uh, uh, habits of behavior and, and reactive patterns and so forth and so on. Those psychotherapeutic measures include the whole array of them that are traditionally thought to be psychotherapeutic along with certain meditation practices and other things that are thought to be spiritual in nature, but actually are psychotherapeutic, such as uh, looking at a, at a present, unpleasant sensation or experience and seeing it disappear. This is a, and this is very elementary, what I'm talking about, that example, but it's the example, an example of a, 
what seems to be a spiritual practice that actually is psychotherapeutic. It actually gives you temporary relief from the symptoms of the actual problem, which is the fear of life. All of these things can be used freely and more effectively when the fear of life is gone than they can be when they are used to try to uh, fundamentally transform life in a way that will be acceptable to us. In other words, those psychotherapeutic techniques that are found in a lot of disciplines can, when they're put to the task, of trying to solve the fundamental problem of human um, disaffection with life must fail because they're addressing the symptoms only. But they're useful in addressing the symptoms when they're seen as in their, with their true limitations and their true potential. <clears throat> I believe and I have the experience of my own life to back me up that the recovery from the fear, from the effects of the fear of life, the effects, of, you know, the effects of the fear of life have their own momentum and their own uh, kind of gravitational uh, uh, stickiness that that takes time to pass. It's uh, it's not like a quick fix where you you I don't know get enlightened and then everything's wonderful again. It's like a disease, and the symptoms take time to pass. And the course of recovery is unpredictable and idiosyncratic according to the nature of the individual mind that's experiencing it, and, and that has created the, the neurotic structure itself. I believe that all of humanity is a single creature, With, with that is living many human lives, and that that the possibility of living as an individual, separate human being appears only because of the unique power of our sense of self consciousness, our sense that I am something in particular. That the capacity to live as a separate individual is because we have such a vibrant, vivid sense of self-consciousness. But that when the barriers that the fear of life throws up disappear, then the misery of others is uh, accessible to us. In fact, it's just present. And there's not much of anything they can do to be done about it except to help others free themselves of the cause of the problem in the first place. And it's this compassion, the, the fact that we can't get away, especially once we get healthy, we can't get away from the common experience of, of psychological misery that pervades the entire species. It's this compassion that leads us to try to be helpful to others and bring this... Um, this solution to the species as a whole. I believe that the act is so simple and so harmless, self-evidently harmless, so simple. It's like nothing to do, really. Just look. It sounds hard. It feels hard when you're when we're caught in the in the disease structure itself, but it's really quite simple. It's quite simple to say. The instruction to, is very brief to uh, show people what it is that we're talking about. The, that it doesn't matter whether I go to great lengths to try to explain why it is that this works and why it is that I'm bringing it to you, or if I just get you to do it without you even knowing that you've done it, for that matter. Well, you pretty much have to know you've done it. I believe that anyone who intentionally, with the with the, the intention of doing so, 
has the direct experience of what it feels like to be, what it, what human being feels like, will free themselves of the problem and find themselves safe, secure, at home, fulfilled and satisfied, and most of all, sane in their own lives. It's taken 12 years to come to see just exactly how simple this is. 12 years. <laughs> Having seen it, I have no interest in uh, procrastinating or delaying uh, any uh, for a, another second in trying to bring this to the rest of the species, to the rest of the humanity, to the rest of humankind. We live in an age when a number of uh, what David calls David calls it a perfect storm because that's just a kind of a, a um, something that's in the cultural. Uh, it's a meme that's present in the culture. We live in an age in which, for the first time ever, it actually is possible to reach seven billion people with a simple enough message. It actually is possible, maybe not every single individual in those seven billion, but such a vast majority, vast, it's not vast, a big majority, that it can be said that every human being has heard of this. This is because of the, the, uh, the magical technology that has come into play in the last 20 years in which we actually can talk to each other anytime, anywhere, under any circumstances. And the only thing that's required to get a message like this into the, into human, into the consciousness of humankind is to find ways and means to use the things we know how to do to get the attention and to communicate the act using the technology available to us and the skills we have. Because of all that, we have embarked upon an experiment, a great experiment, in which we are seeking to, using this technology, to do just that, to, within a very short period of time, you know, it doesn't do any good if it if it uh, spreads out over new generations and things like that. It gets diluted and and uh, lost in the ocean of misery. In a very short time, actually, to do what I just said, which is to get it so that all of humankind has heard of this, and a large percentage have done it. We think that if we can accomplish that, that that will actually, and I don't know any other way to say it, that actually will solve the problem of human being. That actually will reverse the course of humanity, the course of humanity having been until now a course that is leading to, well, extinction, really. You know, extinction. The earth wouldn't care if we went away. No, nothing remaining would care if we went away. And of course, we wouldn't care because we wouldn't be here anymore. But I care now. I think humanity, humankind, human being is magnificent. It's like nothing else that has appeared on this planet. In our, in the whole scope of what we know to be, to exist, human beings are unique and magnificent beyond, beyond any way of even speaking about it coherently. The potential of the human creature, this, this, uh, strange, um, occurrence of the arising of a human being out of dirt, 
really, uh, dirt, is, uh, is precious. And God knows what we could do if we were well. Really, God knows what it would be if we were well. I think humanity is worth saving. And I think that we can. And now that I think that we can, we're going to try to do that. Just that. We're going to try to save us from the, the extinction that seems to await us, resulting from our own misery and reaction and response to misery that's caused by our own insane relationship with our own actual lives. So, we have launched an experiment. It's experimental in actually two aspects of it. It's an experiment because I have, I have this hypothesis, I have a theory, I have a hypothesis and a theory, and I want to put it to the test. And there are enough people who have experienced for themselves the power of this simple movement that we have now a um, human resources of pretty big extent if we can learn how to effectively uh, use those human resources, the skills and so forth, and understandings, tech, technical understandings and uh, all kinds of understandings among the now large group of people that have seen for themselves in their own lives the power of this movement. I want to see, since, since we have, since it has proven itself in a small sample of humanity, a small sample being several thousand, since it has proven itself in a small sample of humanity, I want to try the experiment of getting it into the ears of all of humanity just to see what happens. I believe what will happen is that humanity will reverse that course that has been leading toward greater and greater efficiency and effectiveness at murdering each other, at harming each other, at using each other, and at destroying the environment that, re that is required for us to even stay alive. The the course of humanity's development will go back in the other direction. Things won't get well all at once, just like they don't get well all at once in the individual human mind that's free to the fear of life. But instead of moving that way, it will begin to move back towards sanity. Sanity is the goal. Really. Sanity is... It is uh, a sane relationship with life is what provides the only basis from which we can get the deep satisfaction and fulfillment that life as a human being offers us. And if we go sane, we're going to be okay. <clears throat> so, we have begun recruiting and gathering together people who have skill sets that can be useful in this endeavor. You know, technical skills, internet skills, computer skills, uh, psychological skills, uh, artistic skills. We were talking this morning, it would be wonderful to get uh, some rap going. You know, like I want to speak in all languages. We have, uh, we have a lot of uh, translation going on in uh, a surprisingly large number of languages already, but there are other languages that are so far untapped, like the language of poetry and rap and music and and uh, and visual arts and things of that nature, all of which can be brought to bear in the effort to bring this to capture the attention of humanity and bring the the uh, suggestion to them. So we've started this project and this program, and we are recruiting people. We now have a volunteer coordinator. We have a, some, uh, some 
we, we've arrived at some detailed understanding of what we need, and that's developing as we go along. This doesn't happen overnight. But what we want to do, and as a kind of a waypoint, a kind of a, a uh, checkpoint, is the second part of the experiment, which is another kind of experiment that I don't really even have a hypothesis about. But it, w- I, it would be really interesting to see what, ha- what, if anything, occurs as a result of it. The main purpose of it is to focus our efforts in a way that we can, we can gather together the people involved in this in a short enough time to be effective. And that is that we are going to have a moment about a year from now in which everyone who is involved in this work, all of us here, everybody around the world, hopefully many, hopefully hundreds of millions a year from now, will at the same moment just notice what it feels like to be me. Just to see what happens as a focus of the of the project itself, just to see what happens. Now, of course, it is the it is certainly the case that that if that the, that those people who actually participate in that experimental moment will have already rid themselves of the fear of life and be in some stage of the course of recovery from the effects of the fear of life. It's not that, I say that in order to to clarify, that it's not that that we are trying to make that be the only time that people look at themselves and that they wait until that moment. But that's kind of the... Anybody who does it in that moment has already been doing it. And we want to see what happens. If we get to the point where hundreds of millions of us actually have heard of this and are involved in that moment, that experimental moment, there is no doubt in my mind that every human being on the planet will soon hear of it, no matter what else comes of it. So we have set now, we just did this last night, we were waiting to but we just did this last night. We have set now the date of that uh, community uh, experimental inward looking to be the last day of next year's retreat, which will be the 13th of November, and we're setting it at 11 o'clock our time, which is 1900 GMT. That date turns out to be kind of interesting. We just said, well, we're going to do it on the last day of the retreat. But it's kind of cool because that date also contains a new moon and a solar eclipse. For those who <laughs> for those who like that kind of stuff. <laughs> You're the first ones we've spoken to about this date. But in the next few days, as Carl and I recover from this and begin to find time to return to the, uh, you know, the, the, the regular work, uh, we'll, we'll be putting this out in the world by all the means we have. Nothing like this has ever been tried before. Nothing like this has ever appeared before. Although this this insight into the cause of human suffering and the insight into the act that can cure it certainly is the culmination of at least 5,000 years of human struggle to try to find a solution to what seems to be the misery of human life. But nothing like this has ever happened before. This is new.
it has a it has a a, a long uh, tail to it, but it's new. And I guess I'm done. I am uh, uh, grateful beyond my ability to speak it for your presence here during this time and for your willingness to to relate to this suggestion in the wondrous way you have. And uh, now I am I'm hoping that you guys will have something to say yourself. I'm certain I know your name. Hamsa. Hamsa, right, of course. A few questions. Okay. Uh, start with um, trying to ask a question in relation to what you just said. Okay, I'm going to start with... Voice up, mic up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sit up. Um, so you said earlier um, to focus on your general personhood or me and is it the same thing that is that occurs like when you're noticing what the knot in your chest or this no. arisal where it disappears it's not no okay i mean it is, it may well be but uh -huh. it takes it seems to take the intention to actually get the feel of you in other words it's not something that happens accidentally we have spent an awful lot of time learning how to dissolve, you know, knots of mm -hmm. confusion and, and so forth and so on. And certainly true that when it dissolves, mm -hmm. whatever is left is what you're left looking at. Okay. But what you're, the, the interpretation of the psychology, the, the psychology will interpret that in the context, the only context it knows, okay. which is, which is, uh, which it, which means it will not interpret it to be you. So it's not the dissolution of your personhood. No, no. It's just a, right. a, you can't a dissolution your of, the, of, the sep of the separate idea of yourself? It's not a dissolution of anything. Okay. It is just the direct noticing of the experience of you. Okay. And the effect of that is to not exactly dissolve, but to snuff out. Mm -hmm. the only cause, which is the fear of life. And the fear of life, you know, the Buddhists are familiar with the fact that human misery is kind of, it's not, like when the Buddha talked about suffering, he was actually talking about dukkha, mm -hmm. which is a word that means uh, the wheel of a cart being slightly off-center. So that it's kind of, everything kind of works, mm -hmm. but there's kind of this thing that's not quite right about it. Okay. So, the fear of life presents itself in the in the life as a very faint murmur of anxiety that can flare up and die down and so forth, but it's always there. If you check that faint murmur of uncertainty and, and uh, discontent and so forth is always there. Mm -hmm. That's the fear of life. Mm -hmm. That goes away okay. pretty, uh, pr pretty much immediately. And then what happens is just a normal in the normal cause, in the normal way in which cause and effect operates in everything, mm -hmm. just a normal falling away of, of uh, structures and strategies and understandings and insights and context and so forth mm -hmm. that are that themselves appeared and took their shape only because of the presence of the fear of life, and they begin to fall away and new psychological structures begin to take their place that are sane and not founded on the foolishness that, the foolish idea that life is uh, irredeemably flawed. Well, I don't feel like I could say that I've had a look. I feel like I've asked the question and that there, I can see it as some feeling of, you know, an experience sometimes of looking from an emptiness or there not being anything. But it doesn't, I still wouldn't say I've looked at myself. Well, or I wouldn't say that I knew I had, so. 
Good luck now. It's not hard. You're here, right? Mm -hmm. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. You know that in a way you don't know anything else, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know that in a way you don't know you even have a body. Mm -hmm. The knowledge that you have a body is, is contingent. The knowledge that you're here is not. Is that true? Yes. So where does that come from, that certainty? Look for that. Yeah. Okay. Look at that certainty. Mm -hmm. You, you, uh, the, what you are, look, what I want you to look at and I, I, I can have no way of telling whether you, the fact that you report that you haven't doesn't mm -hmm. really necessarily mean that that's true. Mm -hmm. But what you're looking for is what feels like person. And it's the same now as it was when you were a child. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same. It's very subtle. It's not possible to hold your attention on it. It really isn't. Not possible to like rest in it or, mm -hmm. or disappear into it or anything of the kind. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the best you can do is like a fraction of a second glimpse, almost mm -hmm. out of the corner of your eye. Mm -hmm. Well, if it happens, it seems so fleeting that there's no way to say for sure that that has occurred. That's right. Except for this. Uh -huh. This is the way you tell. Okay. You start paying attention to the things about your psychology mm -hmm. that have been problematic for you. Well, I, I have seen over the last year some things become less kind of frantic or not. I'm, I'm definitely not as wanting things in the world of experience like I used to. I will just can let a lot of things That's, go. But there's still a sense of, there's still that anxiety that can keep me on the, the wheel. Comes and goes. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. Okay. If, if the the way of telling is what you just did, mm -hmm. I tell you that you have, mm -hmm. you have succeeded. Mm -hmm. If you if that's what you've seen over the course of this year, mm -hmm. that that's what that you have succeeded. Now there's no way of telling how long it takes before enough of these things get resolved mm -hmm. for you to be confident that uh, that okay. things are stable and, okay. and you know, that the end is in sight, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. There's no way of predicting that. But that'll come too. Okay. And in the meantime, I tell you, the best thing to do is to pay attention to those things, to those psychological things that have, have been unpleasant and, you know, like, mm -hmm. and obviously neurotic. Yeah. Obviously, you know, like, not kind of off. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to those things. And if they don't show up, that's the only way you can tell, because okay. that's what happens. Mm -hmm. the, those are symptoms. They begin to pass away. Okay. Well, I can definitely still have, I still have these addictive things that are, that totally show up. But oh, I way. still have some stupidities too. Okay. That, uh, that I only notice them mm -hmm. when they go away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have another question about um, serenity and indifference. I was recently told that don't be confused that you have you're feeling serene if you just have a sense of indifference. <laughs> and I, in that's been a big part of my life. I think indifference. And I was like, oh, I've always kind of wondered what that was about because it didn't seem completely like, oh, I'm uncaring, but I'm so peaceful about it. It was just like not allowing myself to care maybe or I don't know but I I've, I've really seen it recently with a I've lost contact with my mom over something and I can see that we haven't talked in a long time and I'm just kind of like indifferent I, yeah uh, and serene. I don't know how, how do I you yeah. think it's <laughs> I know, I don't, I'm kind of like I can't believe is, that I don't is, care more what to do with that even. this is it what's known as a distinction without a difference <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, uh, true so, okay. you know it, it's uh, when, when we're when we're caught up in the in the neurotic craziness of 
the, uh, being afraid of our own lives. Uh -huh. We come upon a lot of dis distinctions that have no difference in order to prefer a state that we imagine is the preferred state. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about it, well, difference sounds really kind of, you know, negative. Mm -hmm. Cold. Mm -hmm. Right, cold, mm -hmm. and un unfeeling, and so mm -hmm. forth. Whereas serenity, that has a feel of something like full, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it, it's, it's just part of the symptomology to make those distinctions. Okay. The fact is that nothing whatever that occurs in your life actually harms you or helps you in any way. The, 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 and the, the indifference, which is indistinguishable from serenity, is not a indifference to the pain of others. Mm -hmm. It's not like that, but it's an indifference to what to, it's a it is the falling away of preference of preferred states. It's the falling away of a preference, like for example, your relationship with your mother. Mm -hmm. There's a preference that that should be this way rather than that way. Mm -hmm. And as long as that preference is paramount, in the way you you uh, view and judge the way you relate to your mother, you'll be miserable about it. Mm -hmm. When that preferred, that sense of a preferred thing mm -hmm. disappears, then you you will not be you won't be hurt mm -hmm. by the fact that your relationship with your mother remains problematic and distant or whatever mm -hmm. it is, right? Well, I feel like I don't want to be in this, this, um, a pattern of blocking out, avoiding the emotions around it, which I... Don't worry. This won't okay. cause you to avoid emotions. Okay. You know, emotions are, and, you know, th th there is a lot of emotional, a lot in our emotional life mm -hmm. that are symptomatic of the disease itself. Those components of our emotional life, like mm -hmm. yearning and longing and Okay. And all of that, those disappear. Okay. But normal human emotional life remains as it is, you know? Okay. Love is love, and, and so forth and so on. All right. You know, it doesn't take away your humanity. Quite the contrary. Okay. It uncovers it. Okay. Without you needing to decide ahead of time what states should be here and what states should not be here. You follow that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Keep in touch. Yeah, yeah. You're doing good, really. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't, don't worry about <laughs> serenity and indifference. <laughs> <clears throat> Liz. And if you do worry about don't worry about it worrying about it. <laughs> That'll go away too. <laughs> Hi, Liz. Hi, John. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. You look good. Really? Yeah, you do. <laughs> kind of tired. Um, so what I've noticed is that when I feel emotional or, you know, hurt or feelings hurt or angry, frustrated, I can't look at myself. That's okay. Do it when you can. No, don't worry about when you can. This can't. does bother me because yeah, but the, the, it, it bothers you. But it, that'll go away too. Here's what it is, Liz. The times that you can't, they don't count. They're completely beside the point. The same <laughs> symptom picture is present, right? And there's oh, I wish I could do this differently, and so forth and so on. But the times when you can't, they don't count. I'll tell you why I think it's important, uh, so, you know, so you can tell me why it's not, okay. but... <laughs> <laughs> well, otherwise, yes, anyway, yes, yes. because otherwise it seems like my mind splinters off, and what I think I'm looking at is another splinter, you know? A and it makes me doubt that I'm doing this at all. It seems like if there's something to it, I can do it at any point. Because I'm there, aren't I? Why can't I see it? Because your attention and your intentionality is hijacked by the, the strength of the, the symptoms that are present at that time. 
your attention is much more focused on, oh my God, I can't do it, what's wrong with me, and so forth and so uh -huh. on, and it just hijacked. It's very difficult to do it when attention is naturally drawn to things that seem to be threatening or negative or like doubt and stuff like that. Doubt's not a problem. Doubt comes and goes. The times when you can't do it don't count. Those times are due entirely to the symptoms of the fear of life, which themselves are in the process of disintegrating. And there may be, God knows what can happen in that process. For me, it was quite dramatic. But I'm hoping that we can get to the point where it's not. Mm -hmm. But those times don't count. The, the thing to do is what I just suggested. Look and see whether it's not the case that there are uh, psychological quirks, negative psychological uh, reactive behaviors and opinions and so forth. Look and see whether it's not the case that there are some of those that mm -hmm. have disappeared. Well, my mind says they disappear because I'm just wearing them out. I'm tired of them. It doesn't matter what your mind's opinion is. Mm -hmm. It's the fact of it, mm -hmm. not the opinion about it. It's the fact of it. The opinion that arises, uh, they're just gone because I'm wearing it, you know, I'm worn out or they're not this and that and the other thing. That's part well, of What the, have I got That's left? part of the defensive response. <laughs> well, what else is there? Huh? What else is there? I mean, what other... I mean, you're saying it's part of the defensive response, but it's also my only way of evaluation. No, the way to evaluate is factually look and see without regard to the opinion as to why it happened whether it's the case that negative psychological traits have begun to disappear. Just the fact of it. And the opinion of it is really beside the point. So it really is a matter of trust. Because... It can be a matter of trust. Agreeing which, that, well, they're gone, but... And they're gone because there's some looking going on that I can't particularly say is earth-shatteringly obvious. You know what I mean? Yeah, but here's another thing about it, right? I tell you how to tell whether or not it's working, mm -hmm. okay? And and there's a strong defensive reaction that arises from that, from my telling you that. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> and I tell you also that look at the facts, not at the opinions and so right. forth, because the opinions are part of the defensive response and so forth. Now, and then, of course, the mind goes back and says, yes, but it could be this rather than that, and why right. do I know this, and it's just a matter of trust. And the bottom line, Liz, is it doesn't matter whether you believe in it or not. If you've done it, it's going to do its work. And the and all of this is part of the course of recovery. Now, as I said when I was trying to sum up, there are psychotherapeutic measures that can be brought to bear to mitigate and minimize the effects of that. You know, I used to talk about I used to talk of the process of the recovery before I saw it in its in its yeah, actual yeah, yeah. relationship, but I talked about it in this from my experience as a person who blew up buildings. Right. And I would say to people, "Here's the thing: when you set out to blow up a building, you set the explosives and you get everything in the right place, right? And then the moment you trigger that explosion, that building's done. In that instant, that building's done." Mm -hmm. It's gone. But it takes quite a while. But you better not go back and look, And a lot of fire look, and a right? lot of smoke <laughs> and a lot of falling debris before uh -huh. it actually comes to rest on the ground. Uh -huh. Which is another way of looking at the course of recovery. <laughs> a little more graphic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Well, wait. I, so I have to ask something else. A lot of people who've spoken, including you and Carla, all, all these people have had some kind of big experiences. I can't say I have. You mean in the past? Yeah. Well, that's a you're, yeah, you're and you say it off. doesn't matter, you know. You're better off. But somehow I think there's a connection. There is none. How do you know? <laughs> because I know. Because I'm sane. Well, because <laughs> I'm not. Because no, 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 I'm no. not caught up. Okay, in that. <laughs> let me ask you. So all the people that you connect to, 
who have, quote, become sane. Are there people who haven't had some big emotion? Oh, my God, yes. Look at Mark. Oh, okay, 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 there great. There more of them you. than those that have, I'll tell you that okay. for sure. Okay, because that's all I've heard. Yeah, well, you should go to the website. You can tell I'm getting, like, desperate. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. Go, listen, this will be really. I did go to the website last night. Did you listen night. to the reports? Yes, I did. Well, and man. some people aren't so sure, and that's right. some people that's are, right. but. Um, Right. But there's a consistent thread that runs through all of them, and it is not a thread <laughs> of this is the result of some, me having some big spiritual experience in the past. It's the thread of Well, no, I'm not beings. saying that they're, that they're connecting it. I'm saying I'm connecting it. But they, they haven't had it, so you can't connect it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to bring up all my doubts really fast That's here because I know good. when I'm, I get home. <laughs> I'm not impatient with you, but, um, but they haven't. To, to answer that doubt, that's not the case. More okay. people who are involved in this have never had an actual kind of spiritual breakthrough experience, an experience of enlightenment or realization. Most of the people who come, and more and more people are coming from, uh, from backgrounds that are not spiritual. Mm -hmm. right? But those who have come from a spiritual background are more like spiritual refugees. Who have found nothing? No, I I understand that. Who have but found nothing there and never had any any hint that it was ever going to actually deliver what it promises. Oh, I see. Okay, so let me ask you one more thing that I I kind of mess around with. Um, I'll imagine I'm in somebody else's body and I have their thoughts, so you know I really wouldn't know, and I have their perceptions, and then I kind of go back into mine and. Not that I'm really going back and forth, but, you know, in my imagination. And I try to see what's the same. Is that helpful? Somehow to me it seems like it could be um, because something ought it. to be the same. I doubt it. I don't think so. You don't? No, I, I think that that is that because what we're talking about is you. But we're I'm not, you. Uh, yeah, but that's beside the point. The okay. fact that we are the same is beside the point. All right. Really, it is. It's it's something that it's a it's a an intuition, an insight that arises naturally. That isn't, uh, and it is not. It's not a, a gateway into anything. It's just the case. And as the for the fog of the defensive structure begins to dissipate and mm -hmm. go away, then what is the case is just present there. And it's not a big deal. So that the, trying to attain a belief that we are the same mm -hmm. is just more of the same. Well, I'm not trying to maintain the belief. I'm just attain. trying to see what's the same. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to look at myself by. Look at you. Don't look at others. Look okay. at you. Well, I, I was thinking I'm in the person, but I know. whatever. Um, okay. It's a strange, uh, it's kind of a, I can't remember it, but, but I'm, sometimes words just escape me. But it's a strange circumstance that, that the, 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 the reality that I am trying to get you to experience, mm -hmm. that reality, which I think you probably have even if you know it or not, but the reality that I'm trying to get you to experience is both common to the entire human creature and singular to you. So that what we're looking for is the very singular, solitary experience of me. Not of an experience that is the experience of everybody, mm -hmm. but the single, solitary experience of me. Here and now, and it is so. And the and the the other thing that happens in a in a mind that has been conditioned in spiritual practice or psychological mm -hmm. practice or any of that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. The other thing that happens is that there is a deep unconscious allegiance to the idea that this is something that happens in the psychology, and it isn't. It has nothing to do with understanding or anything that occurs within the psychology. It is prior to that and outside of it. And the 
the psychology just changes because the circumstances of it change. Right, right. But you know, when you say, go back to a, um, experience you've had in the past. Yeah. And see what's the same. To me, that's just imagination. I mean, cause all we can possibly know is then right that, now. Then that technique doesn't work for you. Because I think I'm making it up. Because I could be. I mean, how do we don't, know it ever don't happened? Don't worry about it. If that technique doesn't work for you, find one that does. Uh huh. You see, that that's a technique that has worked for many, right. but not for everybody. It's not like one size fits all here. We are our 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 psychology, which is the only means we have of approaching this, from which we mm -hmm. approach this. The the foundation we're standing on is entirely unique. Yeah. There are similarities yeah, in certain it. character types, mm -hmm. but it's entirely unique. So that what works for one won't necessarily work for another. Okay. But the but the most important thing is that you can't fail to get the experience of you, for God's sake. It's you. Okay. You, you but follow? everything else is theoretical, right? Yeah. I mean just this right now is the only real thing. I mean, what else? What do you mean by real? I mean, uh, any, you know, the very thought that I have memories because I sort of lived 10 years ago, in a way that really isn't real, right? Cause Why isn't it real? Because all I can know is, is this right now. It's an, it's an event occurring right now. Okay, it's occurring right now. Right, that event is occurring. That memory. As it occurs, right, it's here. Right, but it's in your mind. <laughs> Where else would it be? Your mind and your life are the same thing. See, I don't Where get else that. would it be? Where else could it possibly be? That's why I think it doesn't help to go to a well, memory. Well, don't do that then. No, but I'm trying to say it doesn't even make sense. Well. It, it was extraordinarily helpful to me okay. and to a number of other people. <laughs> okay. But don't do it. Find right. a different way in. Okay. You know, you're not. This isn't like us trying to come to a a practice that will Work invariably for everybody. lead to. Mm -hmm. It is bringing to people the the news that they have it within their power if they will just try. Okay. to bring an end to misery in their own lives and explaining to them what they have to do. But because of the idiosyncratic nature of everybody's lives, everybody has to find their own way. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of things in the forums and so forth where people have come up with different ideas. And this is the reason, like yesterday, I was talking about the fact that, uh, that uh, exactly what you're talking about. That it's you've got to find your own way. In the end, right. like these suggestions are made, okay. and one of them may may say, "Oh, yeah, that works." But you've got to find your own way. Nobody can take you there. Nobody. You've got to find your own way. Once the intention appears, though, mm -hmm. once the desire appears and the intention appears, you can't fail. You can think you fail. But you can't fail. And the way to tell is to look at the, the psychological apparatus itself to see whether the stupidities are falling away. Okay. Okay? All right. Thanks, John. You're very welcome. I'm really happy to have you here. Thank you. I'm keep, glad to keep, be here. Keep in touch, okay? Okay. Let me know how you're doing. All right. And, and stay with the forums, you know, like... Like, this isn't something that, like, where I am some avatar that is dropped from the sky with this uh, message from God, right? And that, and I am the only one qualified to be helpful to you in finding your way to the, to, uh, to peace and freedom and so forth and so on, right? Mm -hmm. This is a, a community effort. This is yeah, a, that's why I think all the questions are so helpful. Yes, they are yeah, helpful. Exactly. Really helpful. Yeah. It's a community effort. It's a conversation that has sprung up within the human community. And, and that's where it lives. You know, that's like, I am instructed 
by what I hear from you, by what I hear from the people of the forums. Those forums are a, a, an amazing resource, and they're getting richer and richer all the time the more people come. Those forums aren't like what you usually see on the Internet, where people pop in and they want to talk about this or that or the other thing, or their dog or their cat or their love life. Or Those forums, people are focused on the, the whole, this whole matter, this whole extremely important matter as to the looking and its effects and how to bring it to the world. Okay. I'll check it out more. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, John. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you, Liz. Tape change, yes. Okay. Come. Hi. Hi. Hi, John. Um, I'm just here to say hello because we've been here for five days. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Gail. Gail. Yes. Huh. And um, just to say that uh, uh, I'm enjoying the looking and um, it's not really so mysterious or it's hard to do. You're right. It's not that mysterious or hard to do. But um, it's true that things uh, do fall away. Like the thing that I've noticed is that um, <clears throat> I'm kind of at loose ends a bit. Mm -hmm. Because once you kind of look at yourself, then you don't have to really bother creating yourself. That's right. Because you're just That's there. Right. Which so, frees up a lot of uh, time. Yeah. And, and energy. Uh, and energy, yeah. And, but it leaves you, I mean, it leaves me sort of at loose ends. Like things seem kind of random, you know? There isn't that it has to be. Even coming to this retreat, it was like kind of a random thing to do, as opposed to in the past thinking, I have to go, this is so important. And is that a complaint? No. Oh, okay. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't think so. No, but it's yeah. uh, it's just a different feeling yes, of not being different. very so engaged. Uh, it's much different with everything. So I'll just see where that goes. And you and and you, you, the, something will catch your attention. Mm -hmm. Something will catch your interest. Maybe it'll be this experiment. Maybe. And uh, you know, and when it does, like then you become engaged in a way you haven't been before because you're not trailing this endless, you know, looking over your shoulder about, well, am I doing this? What's it going to mean? And Am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Then that, all that goes away. And you act as a sane human being from a foundation of confidence and authenticity and, uh, and willingness to see clearly and, and change what needs to be changed in what you're doing and and so forth and so on. Just sanity. I wanted to ask you to talk more about uh, uh, the natural state and its characteristics. The natural state is the state you're now experiencing. The natural state is a state with, in, of sanity. It's a state of sanity in which the experience of existence is the most interesting thing. Without uh, the requirement of projecting upon it meaning or portent or uh, anything of the kind. The natural state is where the experience of existence is interesting and satisfying and fulfilling. The experience of existence in a human life, in particular, is interesting and satisfying and fulfilling on its own. And God knows the experience of existence is uh, has no limits. There's no. It's full, and it includes feeling loft ends, and that too is interesting. Mm -hmm. It's something that hasn't been here, it haven't noticed before. Right. You know, that's the natural state. It's the state you are in. Um, what does the looking do to, uh, with the fear of death? Well, that's, an inter that's a good question. It's an interesting question. It takes away the morbid fear of death, the neurotic preoccupation 
with death as something to be uh, denied, avoided, run from, and so forth and so on. It does not take away the organic uh, mechanisms of uh, fearfulness that arise when actual threat of death or injury appear, right? That's organic and part of the natural state of a human being. It doesn't... uh, It actually, for me, I can only speak for myself in this matter, but for me, the question of death seems now to be entirely beside the point. It really is of no interest to me. Nothing happens at death. Nothing. What could happen? What could happen? Nothing happens at death. So, it's of no significance of no import whatsoever. You know, if, as a, again, if danger or sickness mm-hmm. or illness or something... You respond. You, you respond, and you respond more intelligently than mm-hmm. you would in the past, too. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was uh, a kid, you know, thinking about death, and I remember being a little girl and thinking, you know, and you hear what people say, uh, that you would go to heaven or these kind of things. Or hell. Or, yeah. But <laughs> I was a good little girl. So <laughs> you were a good girl. I was certainly not going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Surely not you. <laughs> not me, no. But, um, you know, I was thinking that uh, I could see that I, I couldn't be myself uh, as I was presenting in the world. I would be dead, right? So I wouldn't be how I right, am. Right. But uh, and I didn't care about that. Even as a child, the only thing that counted was that um, I would still be there, that I'm still me. Yes, this particular human creature. I, I won't could, be here yeah, anymore. I could sacrifice right. her in a in a That's minute. Right. That yeah, right. that wasn't what was important. Right. But there was nobody to say really. Well, where would you go? Yeah. You know, and I hadn't been around long enough to know that. I'm always just here. Yes, right. So it was, uh, yes. you know, a little yes, more and, worrying. And it turns out, as you, as I think you're beginning to see, it turns out that the whole business of death is just really not interesting. You know, it doesn't. It's not. Uh, it's of no consequence. Nothing happens. I mean, that's uh, that's nice. It is. <laughs> It's much better than, uh, than you know, and I've been, I'm very familiar with, uh, with the, the kind of universal human, really, really psychologically disturbed relationship with the death of, uh, with death. Mm-hmm. I've known that most of my life. You know, it's something I don't want to think about or I don't, it's frightening and scary and maybe I'll be the one that, actually doesn't die. Maybe, maybe of all the human beings in the whole universe, I'll be the one that doesn't die. This will be the one time that it doesn't actually happen to everybody. Right. <laughs> if I, if, if I am, you know, the way I need to be in order for that mm-hmm. to be the case with me. And now it just doesn't come up. Mm-hmm. Just have no, no interest. I mean, that's what's nice about the looking is that it's just, um, you know, I was saying to somebody before, it's just a small adjustment. That's it. It's really a, and then uh, everything comes in. To, you don't have to wear robes. You don't have to chant. It's right. I write. You know, it's nice the secular <laughs> side of it, and yeah. Uh, yeah. well, it's human. Yeah, and you know, it's right. good for anybody. That's 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 right. Yeah. What pleasure it is to meet you. Oh, thank you. You too. <laughs> and you know, it's just that. See, now here's some, here's, this is what I'm, remember, I've told you, there must be people that will not be, like, just torn apart by the destruction of the underlying disease entity. There must be people for whom this will be pretty easy and just, oh, right, hmm, wow, this is, <laughs> this is pretty cool. Enter Gail. <laughs> Yeah, touch wood. (laughs) (laughs) I usually do it here. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. Stay in touch. Okay, I will. Okay. 
You know, I tell everybody to stay in touch, and I really mean it. Mm -hmm. I really, I really mean it. I, it's, it's uh, food and drink to me. Yeah. It's good to see you again. It's nice to be here again. I'd just like to have a little clarification, if I may. Okay. Um, I mentioned to you yesterday that in um, June and July of 2010, I had cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, then I went through a period of time where I was quite enthralled with looking. But I could be, um, I was in wonderment with everything. So I would look at everything look at your buttons, look at everything. And um, opening the fridge door and looking at the colors and things like that. But um, <clears throat> while I was going through several months of just being so enthralled with everything, um, then I noticed that there is a kind of a shift that in the beginning I was looking at the object and so enthralled with the object. But then um, there seemed to be a kind of a shift that happened inside of my head. And it was as if um, now when I was, now when I'm looking at you, this, it's almost as if there are eyes behind my eyes. So that when I'm looking, I'm, I'm also included in the picture. So I want to have a little clarification between whatever that is, and then the looking, where when I did that, it feels like home. So what what is that? And... <laughs> what makes you think I know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's... Um, it only happened, this thing inside my head, or what... It, it It's as if there's a little tiny itsy-bitsy me up behind my, my eyes, and, yeah. and sort of looking out behind my eyes, almost like a double set of eyes up here. <laughs> and, um, but that hadn't happened before, but it only became, it came as a result of being so enthralled with detail mm -hmm. and with looking at every little thing. And I was enjoying that so much, then, um, then this little, little kind of a shift or something happened. Mm -hmm. So that, it was as if, um, while I'm looking at an object, then I also became aware of me in the scene. So that I could sort of, I was perched up on my shoulder or something, I could sort of see me in it as well as whatever well, I was Well, of course, uh, of course, that certainly is the case. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, it is the case that there's the physiological, um, you know, the physiological act of the eyes getting information in the brain mm -hmm. and interpreting it and forming pictures from it and so forth, and then the feedback into the into the, the mind itself. But all of that, of course, is occurring with you as the background, mm -hmm. the, like the white paper on the black, mm -hmm. uh, the white paper that mm -hmm. underlies the black type. Yes. That's always the case. And it's always the case that it is uh, that you are the final uh, resting place mm -hmm. of all sensory experience. Mm -hmm. right? I don't want to assign some characteristic to your actual existential nature that really isn't there, like some intent or act of looking or anything of the kind. <clears throat> Sometimes I feel, I mean, and you are certainly what I refer to as you and, and stress that it's personal, it's not, you know, spiritual and everything. It is certainly the case that that is precisely what is spoken of as awareness, that you are what is thought of as awareness, that it is you that gives rise to the the whole um, well, 
Well, the whole, the whole context, the whole point. You are the context, and the, and it gives rise to the whole point of view and the whole uh, picture that's happening and the relationship to it and the and the idea of the thing switching off in your brain and your little person and being back there and so forth. But all of that, you are the final resting place of all that experience whatsoever. It does nothing to you. It's just that you are, it's kind of like gravity. Mm. You kind of ha- have gravity and all sensory experience ends up with you. Okay. So that, <clears throat> and I'm being really careful because it's very, very easy to go from where we are here into a uh, spiritual, um, you know, a, a spiritual insight or intuition or mm-hmm. understanding or or even philosophical or anything, and that's not that, that really isn't the case. Mm-hmm. So I'm only just kind of guessing that what you're experiencing is the representation of the reality of you and your presence here and your, I see words really fail because you're too simple and too, there's so little to you that when I say things like, uh, well, anything that has to do with you, it's too much, right? But the, the, the intuition of the relationship between you and this human life between the reality of you and this human life, the the representation can appear psychologically as something back here, mm. me back here. In fact, there are some some practices in the rubric of self inquiry that call attention to that. You know the that uh, you as awareness, you as the awareness behind all things happening and so mm-hmm. forth and so on. And of course, that's all conceptual and doesn't do us much good at all, mm-hmm. except give us some pleasure and mm-hmm. so forth and so on. So my guess would be that the, that uh, your mind is uh, has uh, the intuition, the insight that as to the actual relationship between reality and this human life mm-hmm. and, and forms an image that, not necessarily visual image, performs an image that expresses that intuition. It's my best guess. <laughs> well, I guess the only difference with whatever this is up here, <coughs> when I have done the looking, that there's a feeling to this of more being home. Yeah. Whereas up here I don't necessarily feel home. Right. And what I'm I suggesting is that, yeah. that up there is a psychological um, representation. Mm. of an intuition. And it's not, you know, it's fine. It Mm. doesn't cause any trouble. (laughs) Uh, I just didn't know there's a connection or or I just didn't know. uh, I know that the little bit that I have experienced and it's little tiny, it was just just very, very close and just felt like home. See, and that's the other thing. The fact that it's very, very tiny and fleeting Mm. is a sign that it's the the actual thing that I'm referring Mm. to. Something that doesn't, you know, that stays and kind of mm-hmm. that that would that almost without exception would be uh, mm. some psychological representation. Oh, oh, okay, that's good. Okay. okay, thank you. Well, it was good to have you here. You. Stay in touch with me. I okay. Will. Thank you. Hi. Hi, John. Judy, right? Yeah. Good memory. Good guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to come up and uh, for a couple things. Two things is one that um, I can identify with all of the people, uh, Jamie, Jade, uh, Liz, um, with regard to feeling like uh, you didn't get it right or you know you're missing the boat or or all those things. Um, because I, I have felt those things over the last eight months. Um, and so uh, I sort of came and spoke with you a couple of times. I don't know if you remember. Uh, mostly because um, my husband and I had split. I and remember. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. 
And it, it was interesting. I went, we went out to dinner with, uh, with Helen and, um, Keith. Keith. And, uh, Randy reminded me of how, uh, I, you know, heard of him, you know, writing into you. And it was that, that he had left an iPod. He, we were separated at the time and he had left the iPod and had down, he always downloads your podcast for me to listen to. And I was out walking and I heard this. You had read, um, an email from him. You didn't identify it as being from him. And I knew immediately that, uh, that it was from him. And I went home and I emailed him and, uh, and, and it was, and I mean, that wasn't necessarily a great thing, put it that way. It was, it was, uh, it was quite hurt, hurtful, really, mm -hmm. because he, in that email, he had indicated that he had, the fever had broken and somehow he had found it. And, um, I was really pretty devastated because I hadn't found it. And, um, so I actually, talked with John um, about it and uh, he Me, was right? he, I, you, this yeah, John, this here, John right? yeah. <laughs> I talked with John about it and and you were very very comforting um, it, you know I I was in a you know horrible emotional turmoil state but um, but I but I was listening to you I was walking I was you know trying trying to to look at myself um, all those kinds of things and you know and it went from from bad to worse uh, though there was a lot of rocky times for both of us over the next five months um, and uh, there was even some times of existential terror I had a couple of week period I think I talked to you after I was kind of on the downhill side from that existential terror and um, and you know I I always the the thing that I can say to everybody here is that it's always easy, and I think I talked to you about this after I was on the downhill side of that, it's easy to feel that you're looking when things are good. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's harder to feel that you're looking uh -huh. when that the things are bad. And the only thing that I l love, uh, not only the only thing, but one of the things I love about what you have to say is that uh, all those good things, they can't help you any more than all the bad things can hurt you. Yes, that's right. And so I think it's um, well to remember in the good times that these good times don't make you any better yes. than the bad times yes. make you worse. Yes, that's perfect. And um, it's hard to remember it when in the bad times, but if you can during the good times, during your elation, during your you know highs, if you can just say this isn't going to help me right that's right this Check isn't going to help yeah, me right. any more than than not but uh, there was a woman uh from a few years ago I, I think i was listening to some early podcasts who um was talking about which also helps helps me in that she uh felt like everything was very stable very sane but within that sanity she didn't have the highs and the lows as my, I mean, the, the very mm -hmm. elations and then the devastations. And, and she said, it almost seems a little, you know, boring. yeah, boring. boring or predictable or just, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, interesting, but not, uh, not manic or depressive, right. just interesting. Right. And, and I got a lot out of that. I don't know if you remember who that person was. And she said, and you said, well, isn't that life? Cause see, she had some very good things were happening in her life and, and she recognized them as being happy, you know, as being good, but she wasn't elated by it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and just as anything that was happening that she wasn't, uh, completely engulfed by pain in it either. And you said, well, isn't that sort of the sweetness of life? And she said, well, I'm not quite there yet. I'm on the edge of that, but I'm not quite at the sweetness that that would bring. Mm -hmm. And so that was sort of reassuring to me in, in, in that as life goes up, up and down and, or as you get closer to your life, then, then maybe you are more of an observer, even of the good things or the bad things. They're not, yeah. they're not, they don't pull you in as much. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's equanimity. Yeah. That's the name that they give to that is equanimity. Yeah. So I'm looking for that. And yeah. and I haven't completely gotten there. I'm I'm not there. Well clearly yet. you're on the road. I mean, look at you. Yeah, well I well, thank you. Thank you. But but I, I wanted to say too, and I wanted to thank you that um that the thing I appreciate about you is that 
I said to myself, well, what does John have to offer that Buddha doesn't or Krish Krishnamurti or, you know, any spiritual teacher? What, what does John offer that, that isn't already been out there? And, um, and I think that you are, uh, that you offer that act, that act. That's it. You're right. That I one agree. thing. That's the only difference. And, and, and I appreciate that because, um, it's not about John. It's about the act. That's right. And, um, I really appreciate that too, because it would be so easy in your position to make it about John. Yeah, and except for the fact that I've gone sane. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, really, and, yes, and that's what happens. And and the, the it is a it's a temptation to want to have somebody just tell you you're you know it's all you have you know you have it or whatever Pat right. was saying the other day about somebody looking at you and and. Um, and saying that. So I, I really appreciate that. I really thank you for, um, for, for bringing the act and. Well, I know. really appreciate the <laughs> fact that you see that to be the case. That's a very good sign. And I'm very pleased with that because that's my feeling too. I see the act as being what they were all trying to get at. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and that's the difference is it's here now. And it's not, it has nothing to do with me. I'm just a, I'm just the rum dumb ex con that managed to stumble on it as a result of my own insanity, right. you know, right. and desperation. Right. And and that's what I want is I want that and I think I suspect everybody <coughs> wants that. They want it for themselves. Yeah. And they want to have it for themselves, not not just in the presence of John yes, or, or others. Right. You want to have it. That's when right. you're alone, you want to be able in your own lonely, you know, your aloneness to you have that. You want to be sane. Yeah. Yeah. You, you want, want to be, be sane. Right. Right. That's the case. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Oh, and you're, Carla, you're, I know. You're really welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I'm yeah. very grateful to you. Yeah. Stick with me. I will. Stay I in will. Touch. I'm. I'm in. You know. I'm not sure that. I'm not. I'm not sure if the experiment is going to work or whatever. But I'm in. That's why we call it an experiment. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Okay, then. Uh, Mike. <coughs> um, I had an experience, and I felt like I did, you know, Gross. feel... <coughs> sorry. I did feel the self, but... Why do you call it the self? Or me, me. Yeah, me. yeah, but notice that how automatic that movement is. Yeah. To call it something abstract, something apart from you. Yeah, no, it's not. Okay. Um, but uh, I just kept staying, with, like, I couldn't take my eyes off of it, or I couldn't leave it for about an hour, and I got very, very hot here. And I'm pretty confident I found my, you know, my me or whatever, myself. But you said... It's only just a second, whereas I just couldn't, I never wanted to leave. I just kept, you know, staying, I just kept looking at it, and then it got so hot. And even sitting here, I can, if I turn my attention at all, I can feel the heat. But it was very, very hot. And so I guess I just, I thought that I was, finally had found it. But then when you said it's just a second, I just wonder, I mean, I, I truly believe I did, but... Can that work where you don't don't doubt your own your own conviction of this? Yeah. Um, I can hazard a guess as to what's happening, and uh, but and like I pretty much like I did with uh, with uh, Divya. That I have trouble with that name. I don't know why. It's probably because it's unusual. But you, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moi, right. And, and I also would like you to, before I start, I'd like you to notice the fact that you say that you found yourself, and that too is just, doesn't make any sense. You're not lost. 
Well, There's nothing I've lost been, about I've been you. I've trying for four years. And yeah, I know, you know but 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 like it's it's not a finding. Okay, okay? it just isn't. Okay. Um, the 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 looking itself, the actual experience, direct experience of existence as you is always very fleeting. It is, it, and the reasons for that are, I suspect, what I was talking about yesterday, the fact that it, attention, which is the only thing you have to get a taste of any experience, <clears throat> that attention, its natural direction is outward. That's just what it's, it's here for. It's here to be outward directed. And uh, therefore, when we try to turn it inward, and again, inward is kind of a, just a, like I could say, Jones. And, you know, if you understood what I was talking about, Jones, inward is just a word. But what happens when we try to turn it to the experience of existence as me, right? It is in it, exactly the opposite direction from its natural state, its natural orientation. That's why I think it's so fleeting. But it's always fleeting. And sometimes it is so fleeting that you don't even know it happened. It comes and goes too quickly. However, the, the, the success itself produces effects. That one of the effects, the most significant effect, and the one that really I only care about, is it takes away the fear of life. Okay? But it also causes other effects. And what you may be experiencing is the kind of effect of having accomplished it. That uh, it, it uh, has produced this feeling of, uh, <coughs> of heat and a sense that you're still looking at yourself and all of that. But the, the act itself is really very fleeting and of no significance. I, I suspect that what you're experiencing is just the uh, is the effects of that. I don't think you need to worry about it one way or the other. In fact, I know you don't need to worry about it. I did have an experience once um, a while back where I did. I was. I just caught a glimpse of something so fast. That's it. Yeah, and I thought, oh my God, it's me. That's it. Yeah. That's right. That's it. But. Um, That's the only one that counted. The rest of the rest of what you're reporting is just the natural way in which the psychology is uh, reforming itself. I just, um, yeah, and I, I I feel like this was insignificant except for when I want to look at myself henceforth. I'd like to, you know, just. What I'm doing now is going to this place in my body, or you know, the chest or whatever, just the me. I mean, that's how I sort of access it. And I just wondered, is does that sound right? Maybe not. Maybe it's a maybe it's part of the defensive structure, misdirecting your attention. Okay. So, you know? but that's here's but here's I the thing: you don't right. have to worry about that. I mean, really, you don't. It's it's nothing for you to concern yourself with. You can't do anything about it anyway. Right, you have succeeded. You just your report was the report of success. That fleeting moment at that. Oh, that's me. That this, this felt like a like the same thing, sort of, sort of, sort of, very close. Right. But, but I just not. Kept, I just kept doing it. Like kept right. not wanting. And to I, and I also would suggest that whether you're aware of it or you know, it's like if it is what I think it is, and what I actually think it is is a very uh, sophisticated uh, uh, kind of attempt to redirect you to something that isn't dangerous because it's going to ruin your defenses. <clears throat> and if it is, if, if that's the case, and I believe it to be so, I, you know, your report of the fleeting, that's, that's authentic, true, really. The, if that's the case, then I would suspect that the looking is continuing, whether you know it or not. 
that those those uh, I, would, I would say these were only the two times that I felt like I had yeah. <clears throat> and you see the looking doesn't always produce the experience of it because it is so fleeting and because it is of such little consequence it the, the psychology is infinitely capable of producing things to satisfy the desire to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. It's very talented and and the more sophisticated and subtle the intellect itself as a result of experience or or uh, the luck of the draw or education or whatever, the more sophisticated that that defensive structure is, the more effective it will be at uh, bamboozling you. Okay? And it doesn't matter because you've succeeded. It'll go away. The thing to watch for now is, and you know, you can continue to try to do that. It doesn't matter. It's fine. What to watch for now is the disappearance of psychological traits that previously have been unpleasant and obviously off, off killer. Yeah, I had that one glance probably a year ago. And, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't see anything like that after that. Um, but I'm, thank you. I, I just, um. You wouldn't I'm, notice it. You, you wouldn't notice it unless you were looking for it. Because what we're talking about is, is imaginary things, right? Just not showing up. Mm-hmm. They're just absent. Mm-hmm. So if you're not looking for it, you wouldn't notice it anyway. You know, it's a, it's a strange thing, but it's the case. Okay, thank you. Okay? You stay in touch with me. I will. Okay. I will do that. Okay. Um, I really appreciated what you said earlier in the meeting when you were saying the thing about, well, I'll talk to you some other time about it. Um, but anyways, uh, I'll talk some other time. <laughs> I get a teaser and no, uh, no. <laughs> um, no, I, I really will talk to you about it, uh, at another time. Okay. But, uh, I got very excited. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing about it. <laughs> yeah. John, John, you just said something that just prompted a question in me that I thought I knew the answer to, but I'm not sure about. Um, the act of looking, it seems to me that it only works when I'm conscious of doing it. No, that's not true. It's not true. No, it's not true. Oh, okay. okay. The, you know, the neurotics, the neurotic things, they work whether you're conscious of doing them or not. <laughs> Likewise, uh, right. looking is so fleeting and so insignificant. You really have to see this is insignificant. It is a, a really insignificant act. That's why the attempt to fetishize it is so weird. So the, oh, uh, the act of looking can continuously happen, and the time will come when the fact of your permanent awareness of the feel of you here will just be the obvious case and won't be of any special significance at all. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, okay. you may notice it, you may not notice it. You notice it if you're trying to do it intentionally, but you won't notice it if you have already succeeded and it's just for proceeding on its own. Not always, anyway. Okay? Thank you. Liz? Um, what? Okay. Just a little thing. I think I see what's tripping me up. I keep thinking my attention can land on something. And obviously, like when you say, everything but me is outward, then my attention, there's no place for it to land. That's right. So that's, that's, that's right. why that's I keep getting screwed what's up. That's probably you up, yes. Yeah. Yeah, your attention is not going to land anywhere. Right. But, uh, that's why it skitters like off. <laughs> and that's why it doesn't feel significant. Okay. Well, it is insignificant. 
Right, the but reason it, it feels doesn't feel that, significant and it, is because it isn't significant. No, but that's because I've been in the spiritual world so long. It just <clears throat> yes. that's so hard to accept. Yes, that's actually yes, that's true, and and everybody that listens to this in the future should listen to that carefully. That's exactly the case. That's what's tripping you up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But you're doing fine anyway. <laughs> <laughs> On the road to recovery. Hope so. Yeah. Take my word for it, just once. Anybody else? Yeah. <clears throat> Might as well. Might as well. <laughs> Actually, I'm really impressed and excited about the dialogue that this creates. Yes, yes, that's what that's I say. That's amazing. That's really amazing to me. That just the people. I mean, I've been to retreats, spiritual retreats, this and that. I mean, this is the, the dialogue that's created behind this. The energy behind it all is just so beneficial. It's almost like it's uh, it's feeding itself. I mean, it's yes, just, yes, I agree. This is the conversation that we the, have needed to have exactly that's, that's, all along. Yeah, yeah. That, that was about all I had to say. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, this is the conversation we've needed to have all along and have been dodging and ducking because we thought, you know, something else was wrong. Okay? Okay. This is always the hardest part, is uh, is saying, okay, that's the end. Finished. I'm saying goodbye, say see you later. <laughs> Yeah. See you later, alligator. <laughs> Thank you all. This has been really uh, exciting to me and and uh, very satisfying to me. This uh, this time with you, these this conversation with you, has been instructive to me, helpful to me. See, that's the thing. You're never finished. You're never finished. The, the yearning for something finally to be final and finished, the only time you're finished is in the grave. You're never finished. Never. Life isn't about being finished. Life is about being alive as a human being. The complications, the contradictions, the difficulties, the problems, the, the false solutions, the true solutions, these are all part of the ma- kind of magical mystery tour that is life of his, as a human being. They're not, the pro- they're not a problem. Problems are not a problem. I, I encourage everybody to continue the conversation. You know, the, the thing about the conversation that's taking place in this community now is, is that it is of a character as, as you have seen, of a character that's different from anything that you find anywhere else. We're not talking about getting high. We're not talking about getting laid. We're not talking about getting rich. We're not talking about going out dancing and drinking and and uh, finding a mate or not finding a mate. <clears throat> We're not talking about the evils of capitalism. And myself, I have a long history of understanding of the evils of capitalism. But we're not talking about the evils of capitalism. We're not talking about any of that. We're talking about the things that are really of vital importance to humanity, to human beings. Humanity is human beings, you and me. So stick with us. Stay in this uh, adventure. you, You guys just take my breath away. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for this time with you. 
I'm, I, I can't, I can't express the, the, I can't express how grateful I am. Go to the forums, go to the community center, you know, start becoming a part of the conversation. We are in the, in the act of looking. We are absolutely solitary and on our own. We must find our own way. But in the, in the reality of a being human, we are in this together. All of us. The whole, the whole of humanity. We're in this together. We are not hiding away in a closet somewhere, trying to maintain some state of equanimity or indifference or serenity or anything of the kind. We are human beings, relating to one another as human beings, going sane. The result is satisfaction, fulfillment, And most of all, sanity. The ability to, to be human in a way in which we can actually make use of all of the characteristics of human being that is available to us and not fritter them away on foolish searches for Transcendence or transformation or anything of the kind. Okay, I'm done. I guess we're going to uh, have a little picture taking going on and uh, and so forth and so on, and then we will disperse and go our separate ways until we come together again. I love you all again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Uh, You're very welcome. (laughs) Okay, that's it. I'm done.